So the weird thing is, and this surprised me at the time, I had numerous conversations with uh, people who had not taken a public position, but privately were suspicious about lab leak. As effectively we were winning the argument on lab leak mm -hmm. right i had numerous conversations this is a little bit of a surprise that we're winning usually the enemy is so powerful that even if you win the argument hands down you don't win the perception of the argument right because it is so capable of wielding its propaganda machine to to prevent recognition yep. you know as it's done with the mouse telomere thing for example right i haven't won that argument anywhere except analytically <laughs> um <laughs> But okay, so uh, here's what's happened with Lab Leak. Like right? Lab Leak went from a stigmatizable fringe to something unignorable, where John Stewart signaled, "Hey, it's safe for normal people to see yeah. normal things with their regular eyes, and you know, <laughs> call a spade a spade or whatever yeah. it is." <laughs> um, and now it's taken this weird uh, reversal. Right. Where suddenly, as the world has moved on to thinking about Ukraine and not thinking about COVID so directly, there have been there's an emergence of new papers arguing that actually the puzzle's been solved and it is a natural origin uh, via the wet market. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Zach, would you put up the uh, Forbes article I sent you? So is it not going to turn out to be those uh, frozen ferret badger steak popsicles or is it going to be those? Because um, I was I was sort of excited about the prospect of those maybe entering the market, not the that market, but, you know, maybe these American papers market. are not uh, completely clear. Oh, OK. Uh, so anyway, if you'll. So here what we have a classic version of the middle ground scramble that we talked about uh, maybe two months ago. So the middle ground scramble being people who had not nailed the issue of the lab leak now emerging to carve out a middle ground um, position. And in any case, here's, is, here's a great example in Forbes. And uh, anyway, if you scroll down to the end of it, Zach, you'll see. Okay. So there are three papers um, that uh, are being pointed to as suggesting, hey, finally we've solved the problem, and it turns out that um, that it was uh, it was the the wet market all along, right? Now these papers are not the first one is arguably substantive, but it's not meaningful. It doesn't reach the conclusion that is derived. Well, actually, from it. I mean, I, so this is the first time I've seen this Forbes article, and I haven't looked at the Gao et al. paper, but um, according to this Forbes article. The Gao et al. paper says that no virus was detected in the animal swabs covering 18 species of animals in the market, and quote, in other words, the virus was found at the marketplace, but not in any of the animals, suggested that infected people walking through the market were the source of those positive samples. Where did those people get the virus? This paper doesn't answer that question. Like, for, right. I'm going to try to swear, but like, <laughs> people in the city where the first cases are publicly recognized to have been, which is practically across the street from the laboratory, uh, were infected. That is right. no kind of smoking gun with regard to origins at the market. People were walking through a market and were infected, and there's no evidence of the stuff anywhere else. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it's it's nothing. In the market. But yeah. then, okay, so that's the George Gao paper. So what about these other two papers? Did they yeah. do it? Could you scroll down just a little bit? Okay. So these other two papers, um, interestingly, do not nail down uh, what is claimed here either. And in fact, interestingly, who would you expect to be a co-author on both of these? Can't be Peter Daszak because that would be spotted too easily. It's going to be what, Christian Anderson? Christian Anderson. <laughs> right. So Christian Anderson. All right. I hear you asking, what is a Christian Anderson? Um, Christian Anderson is the guy who was caught red-handed in Fauci's uh, email exchanges. What? It's not the ferret badgers, it's the raccoon dogs. Raccoon dogs, right. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, I don't know if you've ever been to the Wuhan seafood market, but you get the ferret badger popsicles and the raccoon dog steaks from the same vending machine, so. Mm, yeah, that'll do it. Um, all right, so Zach, could you put up uh, the Fauci email response to Christian Anderson. Okay, perfect. So here, 
uh, is so this is an email from Fauci to Anderson just saying thanks Christian talk soon on the call but it uh, has the email to which he is responding this is Christian Anderson's email to Anthony Fauci 25 he, months ago who he calls no, Tony six months ago Mm -hmm. And the key thing is very is at the end of the letter here, where he says, uh, da, da, da. I should mention that after discussions earlier today, Eddie, Bob, Mike, and myself all find the genome of SARS-CoV-2 inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory. Okay, that is Christian Anderson in a private email telling Anthony Fauci, uh, this looks like it came from a lab. Okay, now put up the proximal origins paper here at the end of the second paragraph. It says our analysis clearly show that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or a purposefully manipulated virus. Now, this is Christian Anderson lying. Okay. And let me tell you why I say lying. So we've talked about this paper before, but if you would scroll back up, Zach, I'd just like to see when wh when this is dated. So this is dated um, just about exactly two years ago. That email interchange that we saw was from January 31st and February 1st. Um, usually, of course, it would take a lot longer than six weeks even to get published, but yep, this is, you know, this case. is a pandemic, whatever. So, um, but we have less than six weeks or you know just about six weeks between um what is now a publicly available email saying inconsistent with uh basically a natural origin according to uh what we know about evolution and uh a a coming out uh coming out guns blazing saying this is this is natural it's inconsistent with a laboratory construct or purposely manipulated right. virus now, now People can learn a lot of things. Well, you know, data, so can, Anderson, data can show up. Anderson has been asked to explain his reversal, and he has not compellingly done so. But mm -hmm. even I leave open the possibility that his perspective could have evolved. What I don't leave open the possibility of is that he could have written this paper and not understood the way in which it was misleading. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what the paper argues, as we have discussed once or twice before on Dark Horse, is that this virus has to have come from nature because we scientists don't know enough to have basically written the edits that make it so effective at inv invading human cells. Mm -hmm. His point is, look, we're just not that good, right? Now, the reason that that is not just an error, but is clearly a lie, is that we have another mechanism for improving something like a virus, mm -hmm. right? We use evolution to solve problems that we don't know enough to solve directly, right? We use serial passaging to get evolution to favor variants that can infect things we wouldn't know how to describe uh, the solution to. And so basically the point is what isn't in that paper is the proximal origins paper is any analysis that says this didn't come from a lab with serial passaging used as the mechanism to generate it. well here we have actually the last sentence of the paper you can show my screen if you want Zach, because i just pulled up the paper on my on my computer and a pdf form irrespective final sentence of the anderson et al 2020 uh march 17th paper 2020 uh, paper on proximal origins of SARS-CoV-2. Quote, irrespective of the exact mechanisms by which SARS-CoV-2 originated via natural selection, the ongoing surveillance of pneumonia in humans and other animals is clearly of utmost importance. Via natural selection is is effectively doing very, very heavy lifting now and it, there. And it always does, yep. of course. But um, what will not be obvious to most readers of this paper and what I don't think would have been obvious to me five years ago is that he can mean there entirely zoonotic origin or he can mean natural selection through serial passaging in a lab. No, I think I think he has to mean natural selection in the wild, that artificial selection. Uh, I don't I, don't, I, I think he's, I think it's covered. I, I, I don't think it's covered. But in any case, um, he clearly lies in this paper. Uh, by saying that this has to have had a natural origin by virtue of the fact that we don't know enough to have written it. Okay. That clearly elides what he and others in this field absolutely knew, which is that they had other mechanisms at their disposal and what Christian Anderson himself clearly knew in his email exchange with Fauci, where uh, he 
uh, he says that the genome is inconsistent with expectation from evolutionary theory. So to find him now as co-author on these late emerging reversals, right? Two of these three late emerging reversal papers, right? How how were the later? So now you're talking about the papers that were cited in the Forbes, in the Forbes article. article yeah. How are they reversals of his position? They are reversals of the acceptance that lab leak was. So the mainstream accepted that lab leak was a viable explanation. Many of us had recognized that it was the explanation to which all of the evidence which pointed in any direction actually pointed. Right, but not reversals for him. No, no. He is returning to his original position. My point is the narrative. But I, 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 sorry, I just I, I don't I don't see how this is an inconsistency on his part. This feels it's like it's very consistent. It's not okay. The inconsistency is the world moved on and it stopped fighting us on lab leak because it kept losing. I mean, Christian Anderson literally uh, left Twitter. He he was a laughing stock. Mm -hmm. Right for having written that proximal origins paper, he disappeared for months okay. uh, from Twitter. And the point is. The world moves on to Ukraine and it's like, let's go back and get that lab leak thing. Can't can't be lab leak because it vindicates too many too many voices that we don't want uh vindicated, right? Well, and I, I mean, I think maybe maybe more important to many people than vindicating voices that were right uh, is that if if lab leak, if the last two years um, can be blamed on, yes, extraordinarily bad policy that may have been intentionally bad. Um, but more ultimately than that, uh, this kind of research, which indeed, uh, at least within the US, Obama put a hiatus on and uh, and then it just got shunted over to China. By Fauci. Uh, by, you know, with, you know, under the direction of Fauci, uh, then really the whole world should be expected to say, at the very least, no more of this. No more of this. And, you know, that is part, yeah, there are all sorts of reasons that we need to, that it's actually totally relevant from a public health perspective, from a virology perspective, uh, from both individual and population level responses to this perspective, uh, whether or not this is a naturally occurring zoonotic virus, um, versus something that was created sort of chimera like in a lab. Um, but it also has specific ramifications for whether or not this kind of research research should be allowed to continue at all. Well, it's even stronger than you're stating it because really there are two interpretations and they're polar opposites, right? Two, if, interp two interpretations of what? Uh, of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. If the pandemic emerged from the Wuhan Institute, right? And then if you take my analysis, for example, from my unheard article, where I said, actually, this was a jump that was unlikely to happen without human help, mm -hmm. right? Then the point is, you must not do this research because this research is the most likely source of such a pandemic and maybe by orders of magnitude, right? If on the other hand, this emerged from nature, then they get to make the argument that they made that made this happen in the first place, which is we have no choice but to do this research. In fact, with respect to SARS-CoV-2, we hadn't put our foot on the gas hard enough. We weren't ahead enough to do anything useful with SARS-CoV-2. And that's because we hadn't done enough of this research, right? Mm -hmm. And so the point is those, it's one or the other of these worlds. And it, for those of us who believe that what we've got is a laboratory origin and a large unlikely to be jumped gap between nature and humans the point is oh boy somehow we have to not not only not do this research we have to not allow this research mm -hmm. because a pandemic potentially a much worse one could emerge from a lab quite easily right, right. so um anyway that's that's where we are so in in effect they are resurrecting the structures Oh, I wanted to connect one more thing here, which is we talked a week or two ago about the fact that the quote unquote peer review system that we have, the system of uh, grant getting and therefore back scratching, reciprocal back scratching that exists in the publication apparatus and in the grant getting apparatus turns scientists, it trains them to be salesmen. Mm -hmm. And the basic point is what you're getting as you point out, as a sales pitch for future gain of function research, right? Mm -hmm. 
And it's happening basically at the moment when the world, you know, like we all understood that it was not okay to laugh at the lab leak hypothesis right and then ukraine happened and then papers emerge and people may get the vague sense that yes for a while we thought it might have been a lab leak but then it turned out that it wasn't there was wasn't there that scientific work you know uh that that actually did show that it was the the market and of course that work doesn't exist and it, you know i don't know why they didn't keep christian anderson's name off these papers it's too obvious mm -hmm. um but you know he's there the guy who reversed himself you know didn't say in his proximal origins paper what he had said to anthony fauci right is on these things and final point this isn't just lab leak right who is christian anderson's boss at the scripps institute i don't know it's eric topol right Who's that Eric, I, mean, I know. <laughs> yes, you do know. But yes. <laughs> uh, Eric Topol has made the rounds uh, on early treatment and vaccine safety and effectiveness. He's been a great champion of these vaccines, right? And he went very- Not exactly a champion of early treatment, however. No, quite mm -hmm. the opposite. And he went very directly after us on Sam Harris's podcast. I believe, I can't remember the exact quote, but I think he called me a villain of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in any case, the point is, look- You're a piss poor villain, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not great at it. <laughs> no. Um, but, you know. You just can't manage to stay on the side of darkness. Yeah. Try as you might, and you don't even try. All right. I'm going <laughs> to think about that later. There were a couple of reversals in there. But um, but anyway, the, the, point, the point is, right, you've got some powerful structure. I don't know what job it's doing, yeah. but I can see the symptoms. The symptoms involve creating an artificial fringe where there isn't one. Uh, involves uh, making sure not to vindicate um, people who were right early as they embarrass the mainstream, which is too corrupt to get things right, at least publicly, yeah. right? It's the same game again and again. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, nothing to do with what you're talking about for those watching. It's just the dog just knocked over a piece of art, shook herself off, wandered off. I'm beginning to think she's in on it. <laughs> <laughs> she also makes a very poor villain, however. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> being, the worst. Being a fact. Labrador and all. Yes. There's just, there's just, there's just no pinning anything to her.